Hello everyone, how's it going today? Today I wanted to show you, um, due to some questions that came up on sensors and rigging of sensors and things like that, I wanted to, I made this little test level here and I want to rig it up and do some things with what's here. Now it's kind of a, there's not much going on in this whatever it is, but uh, just for examples. Um, so what I did is, if you notice, across the, uh, this large area, it does have quite a few lights. Um, I got some uh, turrets here and there uh, on the top. Then I've got a hangar, door, and ramps, and lights, and a regular door, and ramps, and lights. And I wanted to kind of go through this and show you how it's done. Um, this is just basic stuff. It's basically what I would use in a lot of the builds that I have. So if you... Uh, and this is, of course, if you really don't know the ins and outs of uh, at least the basic sensor setup. So to start with, um, first thing I was thinking about doing is adding a switch to turn on the, uh, the grow lights. If you notice, by default, they're on all the time. And say I wanted a little switch over here. And in fact, why don't I just put it all in one spot? So we'll get into this LCD and we'll call this grow lights. Okay, and, and it's green. Woo. Okay, so what I, what I have here is a switch below it. And we're going to name this switch. Now, to access all this stuff to start with, what I'm doing is I'm looking at it, so my cursor is on this, and then I'm hitting the P key on the keyboard. So that brings you up into this, and it selects the items that you have uh, in your crosshairs. So what you want to do first is go to Signal Logic, and you want to give the switch a name. Now I'm going to call it Grow Lights. Okay, now I'm not messing with this on off on this particular item at all. I'm just giving it a name. So now I, we can go over to these Grow Lights and do the same thing. Look at it with your crosshair, hit P, and then the switch that we just named is now listed here in under on off so now I say grow lights and we'll do the same thing for this one all right so now when we come over here and hit the switch the grow lights turn on and that's really all there is to that um, now the same thing over here I got I got a sign up here and I said thruster RCS now this is actually a CV um, but I put a few thrusters here that are um, obviously not going to really do anything in the real world, but uh, in a couple of RCS. And this is something I commonly do on pretty much all my, uh, all my SVs and HVs and capital ships to save power when you're, when you're parked. Um, now there is, in the P menu, under main, you do have a, uh, a main option for thrusters. Now this works I mean if I hit this it will turn off the thrusters that are on this but it does not turn off the RCS and the RCS uh, trickle a little bit of power as well so that's why I like to put in the switch that does them both so here let me turn these back on again and I'll get over to this switch and we'll just call this Thruster RCS. Same idea with this one. What I'm going to do now is go to all the thrusters and RCS on the ship. Now, you can do it two ways. One, you can go up and you can look at the individual ones, like I did with the grow lights. And you can hit the P key, and you can say, hey, I want this to turn on with Thruster RCS. Or, and this, this is the case on most um, large items and that is uh here let me uh, i'm going to auto group this stuff for now you can also see it listed here for instance under thruster you notice i've got one left one right and two front thrusters so i could open up these click on this and assign it this way as well and i typically do this because there's usually a lot of thrusters and 
and RCS and some of these uh, designs. So it's probably quicker doing it this way, but it's uh, you don't know exactly which one you're looking at. If you wanted to shut off some thrusters and not all the thrusters, maybe have like a power mode like that, you would probably want to uh, manually target every thruster that you would want to uh, address. So on RCS, we have those listed as well. I'm going to do the same thing and set it to thruster RCS. Okay, not that this thing flies or anything, but now they're all off. And when we come over to this and flip it on, it will turn on the, the two RCSs and all the thrusters up here. Pretty simple there. So this is just regular, regular switches right now. Um, I'm going to do one more for turrets here real quick while we're at it. So I'm going to call this turrets. And then I've got a couple of turrets installed on the top over here. And we'll just assign those to turrets. Alright, so now this switch will kick the turrets on or off. Now this is just straight straight switching right now, I guess you could say. Um, on, off, nothing too complicated. And I, I threw a shield here too. Let's just uh, hit that up while we're at it. Um, and we'll call this shield. And then I'll get over to the shield. And we will assign this to shield. So then we can turn that off or I'm sorry, turn that on, and now you notice the shield's on. So actually, all of these are already rigged up and working for regular on-off switches. So the next part is motion sensors. Now, motion sensors I use typically for lighting at this point in time. Now, I didn't know how to do it on my earlier ships, and I kind of, well, in fact, I think it wasn't even possible to do it on the very early ships because they didn't have motion sensors in the game a long time ago but I got a couple different scenarios here one I, I've got we got a door here and I want when you walk up to this door for the door to open and for this light to turn on so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick a motion sensor somewhere over here and I usually just try to rotate these so they're all kind of uh, normal now motion sensors you need to set a range and to do that, typically we'll, we'll look at it again, hit the P key, and then under devices over here, you have this interactive setup. So if you click there, it shows you a default radius box. And then if you look at the bottom right of the screen, it says to enlarge uh, uh, left control plus number pad, uh, shrink, left alt plus number pad. So essentially, you've got five directions you can move or expand or change the, the size of this box with. Um, to go straight forward, it's always five, the five key on the keyboard. So I'm gonna hit control and then five, and then I'm making this come out more. Now there is a limitation, I believe it's like 12 or something like that on how, how many blocks away you can go from a sensor. And then we want to go down, and I'm, and I'm not sure, I think it's 2 right now, control 2. Nope, I'm wrong. So it would be the opposite of that, and that's control 8 to go down. Okay, so I want it to go to the floor. The width wise, you can set that with, the, uh, with 4 and 6 then. So I made it a little bit wider, but actually I want to reduce that a little bit. So I'm going to hit Control Alt and then four and six again to bring it back, and and then I kind of want to lower it down a little bit too. So, oh, wrong way. Okay, so so now if you take a look here, and it's uh. A lot of times you'll have to like zoom around and look at it from different angles to see how big the box is. But this is this is our collision range. When we want that sensor to activate is basically when a player or 
creature can enter this area. So then I just hit escape to get out of that. And we didn't name this, this sensor yet, so we probably ought to do that. We'll just call it front door. And now we can assign this light to front door and we can assign this door to front door. Now I want to back away and now it, it tends to screw up a lot in God mode so I'm going to just get out of God mode and I'm going to walk at this base right now and you can kind of see what's going to happen here. As soon as we get into our, our range you notice the door opens and the light turns on. Alright so that's that scenario. Now the next one is this hangar door and I've got two lights and I want to do something a little special with the lights this time so I'm going to first uh, set up these lights different. So let's say we're going to go with like this one just yellow I give it a bigger intensity, much bigger radius and we want this to blink and I want I want these two lights to blink opposite of each other so it's kind of a sets up a formation so we want to set a blink frequency and let's say every one second it blinks on and off and the blink lasts for 50 percent of the time okay if you follow that or not so it's basically on half the time 50 percent of the time and it's blinking every one second so i'm going to go over to the other light and I'm going to give it pretty much the same settings. But on this one, we also want the blink fre frequency to be one second. But then you've got a, a blink delay. And I want this to be at 50% of a delay. Okay. So now when we back away, you notice that each light is blinking exactly opposite of the other. Okay, so let's get a sensor in here. Say I put a sensor here. Actually in this case, now something with hangar doors is you want them to open from the inside as well. So if I just put a sensor here, I cannot move my, my radius box back into the hangar itself. So it's kind of problematic. So I actually what I want to do is I want to put a sensor on the roof near the hangar door as close as I can. So let's put a sensor here and we'll, uh, we'll name this one here real quick. So we'll call it hangar door. And then we will hop in and we will uh, get back into this inter interactive setup and give it a, a radius. So let's see. And it's kind of a guessing game when you first start on which direction, uh, um, which key is going to do what. And that usually takes a little bit of experimenting because it, it depends how you have that sensor mounted and which angle on how these keys are going to respond. For instance, um, in this case, I want to bring it back in. So it turned out to be Control-Alt-2 to bring this sensor to this point. So basically, this is as far as I can go because the sensor's on this row, which is fine. So when you get close to the hangar door from the inside, it will trigger it. Now from the outside, I want to expand this out quite a bit. And then I also want to lower it down to the ground. And let's see, what is that going to be? Six? No. Okay, actually five. Okay. So now we have this uh, sensor going one space from either side of the hangar door and it comes out a decent distance. So that's set. So now what we want to do is assign these items to that. So we'll hop into signal logic again and then we'll set this to hangar door. We'll set this one to hangar door. And the hangar door to hangar door. And now we have the ramps. I want the ramps to come down too. Now the ramps, you have to invert them for them to work correctly. 
So I'll set it to hanger door, but this I over here means invert. So I will also check that in. And I'll do that for all three of these. It's a mess right now until you uh, basically reset the whole thing. And that's by getting out of its uh, radius. Okay, so I'm going to back away from this range. Now everything closes down. And when I get close to it again, I'm get out of God mode again. So I'm walking up here, and as soon as we get in range, the lights kick on, the ramp lowers down, and the door opens up. So once we're back inside and we get out of that range, it all closes down again. So now we've got pretty much all this, all this front stuff rigged. Um, I'm going to do one other little motion sensor over here. And I've got these couple uh, retractable turrets or uh, little sentry guns up on the roof. And this is kind of fun. So put in a new sensor here and we'll call this uh, sentry guns. All right, and we'll give this one a range as well. Actually, it's defined pretty good right now. I will expand it out a little bit here so it goes back to the wall. That's good enough. Okay. And set this one here to sentry guns, and this one to sentry guns. So now, anytime we go over to this corner of the room and get in that collision box radius, these sensor guns or sentry guns uh, come down from the from the ceiling. Okay, so that's all pretty simple there. Now the next thing is a circuit. And I need to use a circuit, I believe, on this hanger area. I've got all these lights up on the ceiling, so there's like several over here, and they're way over here. The problem you would have with one sensor, let's say I put a sensor over here somewhere, and I believe this basically this area is probably too big for one single sensor. And I'm just gonna assume it is, even though even it, maybe I could fit one in the very middle and get it to both edges, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do two on this. Um, and it's needed for very large areas. So let's say we put in a sensor here, and we'll call this hanger lights one. And we'll set a uh, radius on this one again. So I'm going to bring it all the way back to the uh, front of the base, have it go over the farms, and then we'll uh, have it come, let's say, a little, about to there. Now, where I have it located at max range, it would get to here. So I, as you notice, it would not cover this whole area on this side of the base. Um, I'm going to back it off just a little bit so it's a little more centered. So we'll say it goes to there. And this is just for... Uh, so we get out of there, and I'm going to just kind of mark that. So we know this particular sensor comes out to this block. Now we're going to put in a second sensor over on this side. And give it a name. We'll call this Hanger Light 2. And I want to give this one a range. So what I want to do is I want to bring it back to and overlap by one block where the, where the other sensor goes to. So I want to bring it to there, and I'll bring it out to this end wall, and out to the borders on both sides here. Okay, now just to make sure I got my, my stuff right, I'm going to take a look at the first sensor that was put in again. 
and see that okay so this actually stops one before that and the other one goes right to it I want them to overlap by a block so I'm going to bring this out one more so they intercept each other okay so now we have these two sensors and I want these two sensors to work together to control all the ceiling lights in here so what we have to do now is make a circuit. So I'm going to get back into the P menu a minute under signal logic. And then you see all this information down here where there's different kinds of circuits you could, you could do. Um, there's 2x and 4x, and there's ands and uh, nans and nors and all kinds of stuff. Now, for this one, it's pretty simple. I want it to do or. And the reason for, for this, if you, if you uh, break this down into a sentence, I guess, basically, if this sensor or the other sensor are tripped, then do this. So that that would be kind of the logic behind it. If I did and, that would, that would mean both sensors would have to be tripped at the same time for the signal to go through. And that's, that's pretty hard to do unless you get, you know, player on both sides of the hangar at the same time would do it. But we don't want that. Now, we're only using two sensors. You can use up to four sensors, and that's what the 4X is about. It allows you to put four sensors into a, a uh, logic. But we're going to do two on this one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select 2X or add circuit. Now, what I want to do is I want to take the names of both of these sensors that were added. So we've got hangar lights one, hangar lights two, and then I want to give it an output signal name. We'll just call it hangar lights. Oh, you can't make it very very big, but hangar lights. Okay. So it's different than these names, and now we have a signal that's hangar light. So what I'm going to do now is go through and assign all these lights here to hangar light. And typically uh, I do run around with the P menu and usually assign these. It's a lot easier than trying to guess what lights are what in here. Um, the only time I really don't do that is assigning thrusters and and RCS, especially if I just want to shut them all off. All right. So now I believe I've got all these lights in here set to that. So now when we, except for these wall lights here, and I'll show you why I skipped that for now. But uh, so as soon as we enter this space, all the lights and this entire area should turn on. And our overlap, where the two sensors are coming together, are, is right at this block here. And having that one block overlap causes it to not flicker. If they both went to the exact edge and stopped right there, what I've noticed is there's a brief second when you're walking through that area that it will switch from, it, it kind of like loses its signal. Um, unless it's, it's overlapping. So there would be like a flicker. And because they overlap, there's no flicker. Now this is something I had to do with like the waypoint hanger and the recent uh, redoing of the Persis carrier to make the lights work because the space was too big for a single sensor. In fact, the uh, waypoint hanger, I had to run four sensors in the hangar area to cover everything. All right, so that's on that part. Now this last thing over here, I just wanted to do something different, and we'll make this a, another motion sensor. Eh, no, nah, how about just a regular, regular sensor this time. Now this light barrier, this is something I've never used either, and I guess I would have to play with it. I'm not even sure what you'd do with it yet, but oh, yeah, let's not put a sensor on that roof here. Okay, so let's call this one Trippy Lights. 
what I wanted to do on this is make all these lights blink in sequence all the way across and then repeat. So we're going to have to use some, some blinking light stuff going on here. I'm going to set them up first before I actually assign them to this switch. So on this one here, let's say we got a blink frequency and we'll set this to, let's set it to five seconds to keep it easy. So five seconds. And we want this to be on 20% of the time. So basically I'm taking the, uh, so Basically, it would be on for one second, um, since it's, it's got a five seconds total. So one fifth of that is one second. So we're going to keep this one exactly how it is right now and not set a blink delay. So we're going to go to the next sensor. And we're going to set the blink frequency also to five seconds. And again, at 20%. And we're going to give it a blink delay of also 20%. Next one here, same thing again. Except the blink delay I want to be 40%. And so on and so forth, going to the last two here. This one would be 60%. The last one would be 80%. Okay, so now backing off, you can see what's going on with the lights. So the reads going kind of like a formation. Be kind of a neat effect if you, you know, if you think of old old school Battlestar Galactica, you know, where they had the lights going down like the, the launch runways, it would be uh, kind of something you could use for that. And of course, uh, last thing I wanted to do too is just set this so we can turn this on or off. So we're going to call this. These all go to trippy lights. I gotta say, I do, I do like the way the uh, signal logic works in this game. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Once you do it a couple times, it's, um, it's pretty easy. Now, there's a lot more advanced stuff you can do with this, and I, I haven't really invested heavily into that at this point in time, but I've seen some pretty amazing things done with uh, sensors and, and signal logic and the uh, circuits and all that. I've actually seen... Uh, LCDs do like a, uh, a matrix countdown, um, drawing out characters on a screen, which is pretty amazing stuff, actually. So, yes, a lot more can be done with this. Uh, can you do the same thing that, that people have done in Minecraft, where they actually created working CPUs in Minecraft? I don't know if you've ever seen that or not, but there's a lot of YouTube videos and stuff on that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. For some reason, I think it's missing a component to do that kind of thing. Or maybe we're, us EGS people are just so involved in making spaceships that we don't care. <laughs> but um, So there we go. This is pretty much what I wanted to show on triggers and things like that. Uh, there's a, quite a few questions on some of the posts and this and that on how to do this stuff. And I just wanted to get kind of a a neat little guide out there, at least on the basics. Now keep in mind, other things are also triggerable, such as LCDs. For instance, like right now, grow lights is on. I could set this, uh, this sign over here to grow lights as well. So when we shut this off, it turns off the LCD as well. A lot of times what I end up doing on the ships to, not that these things use much power, like LCDs and whatnot, but I usually try to turn them off anyway. Now, for instance, like this is the uh, the circuit for the big hangar area. I could easily assign these LCDs to turn off um, using 
let's see, hanger light, which is the, uh, that controls the whole thing. So now when we back away from here, you notice that that LCD and the hanger lights shut off. So I kind of hope this helped, um, especially, you know, getting started with all this stuff and if you're new to the game and everything like that. Um, now, uh, before I uh, move on, I've got a couple weird things going on. Now, no, I'm still like heavily invested in the alien stuff and uh, I've got a little bit more, more to do on that yet, and especially with the capital ship. But there is a uh, challenge on, uh, from Excalibur's uh, Discord to build a either CV or base level 10 that's uh, really good for alpha 10, essentially. Um, so I started on this base, and this is the first time I did a base, and it's far from finished yet, but it's the first time I did a base from the inside out. Now, typically, I always build a hull first, and then I fill the interior in. This one, I kind of reverse engineered that, and of course, it ended up to be kind of a rectangle. Um, but I had such stiff requirements on what I wanted this thing to do for its size that any kind of fancy design just wasn't working. as was, was wasteful. And to, to explain what I got going on and, and why I'm doing it this way is, first of all, I had to put a big priority on solar. I want this thing to hold as many big solar panels as it can. And right now, I've got a lot of the solar panels off the base because I was detailing underneath them. But essentially, this holds 14 large solar panels all along the uh, perimeter of the base. Um, with defense, with Alpha 10, they like to uh, land things and then come up and get close to your base and take your core through some Wi-Fi procedure. So I wanted to make this base very tough to do that with against the AI. So what I did is I, I, to start with, I got four ground turrets that have complete line of sight on all four sides of the base. Now I'm backing that up with, with sentry guns as well that will also shoot in these, these areas and that'll happen all the way along the perimeter of the base. Now that's just a lower defense turrets and that's to keep enemy uh, enemies from getting up close to your base and not being shot because there's nothing that can shoot them on, on so many bases. And then they uh, do their little thing and they can take your base. They actually claim your core and then your base starts shooting at you. Not a good thing to happen. So this base is especially designed to stop threats from things getting up and close to your base. Um, now there's going to be some more turrets on the top. It's going to have a large landing pad. Inside the hangar area, which is far from done, um, it, uh, I wanted a uh, lot of function. Essentially, this thing, is, it might not come with all these parts, and I don't think it will, but it's got three uh, 320K uh, storage bins. Excuse me. Uh, quite a few extra cargo boxes. It's currently CPU compliant as well. But so you got three constructor bays, and then two deconstructor bays, which I'm still not quite done with. Now I'm doing that, uh, a new effect here with LCDs and projecting LCD stuff over a uh, wall area, essentially. So to pull that off, <laughs> and this is, this is uh, something I you know recently learned. I did have a, a brief video about it before. Is I actually hid some LCDs upstairs over here where you can't see them. And these LCDs are doing something like this. And trust me, this, this little bit of text information on here took a lot of trial and error and tweaking and playing with sizes and characters and spacing and the font size and all this stuff. But essentially, it's projecting this information above the constructor, like this is constructor one, two. And there's actually a little arrow. It's not quite perfectly centered yet. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it perfectly centered, but a little arrow pointing at your uh, your storage bin on each one of these as well. And I've got some more embedded LCDs here, which I'm going to try to, it's going to put some more graphics over this area. Um, 
then also on this base, it's going to have two uh, locations to add forges and a location to add a shield. And that's what's all along over here right now. And granted, i got to work a lot of that out yet. Uh, but I've, I've, got the, I've got the room, I've got the space, and everything's kind of set up to hold 3x3x3 three by three by three items. Then you've got this stairway, and then there's an the elevator in back, and this, is, this goes out to a 36 grow plot farm. Um, with some windows to look and then as you continue on into the base you get into your engineering area where you have your generator and solar capacitors and I'll probably uh, get some fuel tanks up here and some O2 tanks and Wi-Fi and just all the I guess it does have Wi-Fi already but everything that you would need you know to control your base and then I also wanted a spot in this base for a backup generator in case that area gets hit. I want this base to still function. Um, so yeah, this is uh, just kind of a fun thing and seeing how much functionality I can get into a relatively low cost, cheap base that you can expand greatly um, on, on what it has over time. And uh, as in construction materials, Right now, it, the hole is concrete. Um, I have been thinking about switching that to hardened concrete, though, for increased hit points. Um, and the interior is done with a combination of mostly wood, but also some carbon substrate. And the flooring, as well, is, is kind of wood, and this is substrate. The reason why I'm not too concerned, because... At least, you know, when drones and things come in to fight your base, they're going to be hitting the hull of it, and then they're going to target either your turrets, I believe, or your core, probably your core. Um, and I'm going to try to put the core in a nice, hefty, meaty place that's slightly out of the way. So just in case they're able to, to take out your core, it won't destroy your, your base your storage or any of that stuff it, you'll just lose your core and then if you record your base you'll be back in business again so that's that's the idea behind this and then one last thing I was contemplating on a very unusual CV that would have big robot legs spider-like um, so I was kind of messing with that just as uh, an idea in my head and uh, Although I don't mind what I've got for a particular leg here right now, I realize for what I will actually want to do with this thing, it's not near big enough. So I'm probably going to have to redesign and build a bigger leg. And the whole point of this is I wanted to build an alien POI seeds vessel that literally, I've seen this done um, actually in a past Excalibur challenge um, when the... the when the goal was to build a CV to take on POIs, um, I seen a couple that actually were so large that they would land over the POI, and then all the turrets and everything would be set up on the underside of it to kill the POI. Then it would have the, everything you need inside to salvage it and and run away with all the loot that you get from it. So that's kind of what the idea behind this is, except. I went way too small in the legs, and they need to be much bigger, so this thing would have a lot of space and can fit over just about just most POIs. I mean, there's a couple that are really, really tall that I don't think it would work with, but most POIs it could just land over, shoot it to death, take out all the turrets, you, you swing down with like a... a HV or SV or something like that, you jump in the base, you start looting it, or you might even have some multi turrets on the underside of this thing to start zapping it and, and scooping up everything. So that's just something down the road I was thinking about, and I didn't put much time into it yet, but it's a, a concept idea I'd like to do and probably have it go with the aliens. And then last but not least, yeah, this is still where it's at. Um, I think I'm going to resume work on this tomorrow. And um, right now I'm just kind of making it a priority to get, to get this uh, time challenge thing done and uh, whatnot. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and you all have a good day. Thanks a lot.